Hello there. This is Alex, and you're watching Different Equations. So today we're going to talk about uh, separable equations. And so today we're going to focus on the mathematics for, uh, only, and then on a different video we're going to do the uh, we're going to talk about the applications. So let's start with something easy. Let's start with uh, just calculus one, really basic calculus one. And here the format of a separable equation, and then we're talking about first order separable equation. Uh, this is the format, and then what this means is that all we have to do is uh, separate the x's, separate the y's. This is actually something that you can that you've done already in calculus one, uh, but we're going to do an extra step here. And so what this means is that we uh, we put the dx to the other side, and then once we do that, the next step that we do is we're going to integrate both sides. But the tricky part is that on the left side we are integrating with respect to the y, and on the right side we are integrating with respect to the x. So that is what we mean by uh, separating the variables or a separable equation. And that's my little note here on the bottom. We can separate the x's, separate the y's. All right, so that's a little bit of theory. Uh, but now let's go into a specific example. Again, this is a calculus one example. You can actually find the at derivative of this. Uh, but let's just focus on the technique that we want to uh, use today. And so we're going to move the dx to the other side of the uh, differential equations. And so we're going to write down dy is equal to 16x to the 3 plus 7x to the 6 dx. So pretty simple. And now we're going to uh, uh, attach an integral sign to both sides. And then on the left side, we're integrating with respect to the y. And on the right side, we're integrating with respect to x. So on the left side, what do we get? So this is a uh, integral 1 dy. So that's going to give us a y. And then on the right side, we're going to get uh, 16x to the 4 divided by 4. So I'm reviewing a little bit of the uh, calculus 1 here. So 7x to the 7, you add 1 to the power, divide by the mu power, and then you add a constant. And technically, yes, you do need to add a constant on the other side, but just to simplify things, we just write one constant on the, on the right side. All right, so you can simplify this a little bit, and then you'll get uh, 4x to the 4 plus x to the 7 plus c. And that is your solution to the original differential equation that you have on the top. Um, technically, this is a, again, this is a calculus one problem. So I'm only doing this because I want to uh, build up to what we're going to do next. All right, so just a quick review and a, a quick review of the calculus one. Now we're going to make the the equation, the format of the separable equation, a little bit more involved. And what that means is that previously we only had the gx function here, but now we're saying that we can multiply by another function, which is just in terms of y. And, but we still do the same technique that we did before. We want to separate the x's and separate the y's. And so if we were to do this just uh, algebraically, so we have hy here dy is equal to g of x dx. So separate the x's, separate the y's. And so that's why, why this is called a separable equation. All right. Oh, this is a h of y. All right, so this is just a little bit of theory again, but now let's go to a specific example. And we, we have several examples, so we have three examples, and they're gonna build up uh, from easy to a little bit more involved. Not super complicated, but just a little bit more calculations. All right, so we want to, we have this uh, differential question, and then here we have to notice that we can separate the x's and we can separate the y's. So I'll do this step by step, okay? So uh, divide both sides by x, and then you'll get the following. So you get, uh, dy dx is equal to 4y, and I'll write this down as 1 over x, and that's it. Okay, so let me put a period here. So now I want to get rid of the y. I'm sure more steps are necessary. So divide by y, and then I also want to move the dx to the other side. So when you do that, you'll get 1 over y dy is equal to 4 over 1 over x, dx okay so i moved the uh, dx to the other side of the equation and that's why i have the dx here all right so now that we have separated the y's and separated the x's we can slap an integral sign there and we're going to integrate so here on the left side we are going to get ln of y and then on the right side we'll get 4 ln of x plus some constants. And now I'm going to write this as a constant C1. And I'll explain why that, what that is, why I'm putting that later on. All right, so now this is the equation that we have. And technically we're, technically we're finished, but sometimes we want to kind of simplify this if possible. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, 
I'm going to put the four as a power. Okay? So remember that property of the ln is that you can put the four inside the parentheses, or actually this is technically an absolute value. And then we're gonna put it inside the absolute value, but it becomes a power. Okay, so that's one thing. So let me just write down the step. So I also like to review a little bit of the algebra since this is the beginning of the class. So this is going to be ln of x to the fourth power and then plus c, okay? So now we're going to exponentiate both sides. So exponentiate both sides. So e raised to that power and e raised to the other side. And then on the left side, we get the absolute value of y is equal to, and then here I'm going to do one extra step. This is going to be x to the fourth multiplied by e to the c1. Don't forget that this is c1. But now the question to you is, c1 is a number that we don't know okay c1 is a number that we don't know so e raised to the number that we don't know that entire red circle number is still a number that we don't know so that's why we write the following so this is going to be y is equal to c and the e and the ln cancel out and then that gives you x to the four so let me just kind of highlight what i'm doing here the red c is the entire red circle e to the c1 and that's it we are done with the problem. So this is your solution to your differential question. And this is the first, ex the first actual example that we have for this class, for this section. All right, so if you have an initial condition, then you can say a little bit more about the C value and about the absolute value, but this is where we stop. All right, so now let me give you another example. I just kind of review a little bit of the algebra algebra of the ln we talked about, but now I want to talk about the algebra of the about the exponential, which we kind of used already. And so what I want to do here, I want to rewrite the differential equation. So first of all, I want to put the dx to the other side. So this is going to be e to the 2x multiplied by e to the 3y, and I'm going to put the dx here, all right? So that means that I want to get rid of the, I want to move the e to the 3y to the other side of the equation. And so what I need to do is I need to divide both sides by e to the 3y. So divide by e to the 3y. And if you are divided by e to the 3y, that's the same thing as e to the negative 3y dy is equal to e to the 2x dx. So now we have separated the variables. So again, that's why it's called a separable equation. And now we're going to slap some integral signs. On the left side, we integrate with respect to y. On the right side, we integrate with respect to the x. All right, so now these are integrals that we should know. So this is going to be e to the negative 3y divided by negative 3. And then on the right side, this is going to be e to the 2x divided by 2, and then plus a constant. All right, so now let's multiply everywhere by 3. So I'm going to multiply the entire equation by negative 3. That way I can kind of simplify a little bit. Not too much, but just a little bit. So let's go up here. And then so we're going to get e to the negative 3y is equal to negative 3 half e to the 2x. And I'm going to write down plus c. Okay, So I'm going to put this in a bold letter c because what we're doing here is we're multiplying negative 3 by the constant c, but c is a number that we don't know. So c times a number that we don't know, it is still a number that we don't know, so we are just going to write down c again. All right, so we could finish here. I mean, we technically we have uh, solved the different equations and we would like to get the y by itself. And so it depends on how far you want to, to go. Sometimes, sometimes we are not able to get the y by itself and so it's called an implicit solution. Okay, so if uh, making things um, ideal, so we will take the ln of everything, and so we will apply the ln to the left side, and then we apply the ln to the right side. And so if we were to do that, then we could kind of get the negative 3y is equal to ln of negative 3 half e to the 2x plus c, and that would technically be in the absolute value, and then the only thing that we could do is uh, divide by neg negative 3. All right, so there's a few details that I kind of skip over, uh, but right now we don't have any initial conditions, so this is all we can say. 
All right, so that's the answer to this question. All right, so that's a, another example for the separable equations. All right, for the next example, it's a little bit more involved. It's not, not complicated. It's just that we have to do a little bit more calculus in between. So this, this is the last example for a separable equation. And again, the goal is to get the y's, well, at least the way that I present this is uh, I want to get the y's by, by themselves on one side of the equal sign and then the x's on the other side. So let's move this entire thing to the other side of the equal sign. Actually, let's move uh, this guy, the dx part. So I'm going to write down, I'm going to write down x squared plus one because on the y, dy is equal to negative x sine y dx. All right, so remember, we want to get the y's, all the y's on one side of the equal sign and all the x's to the other side. So what I'm going to do is, let me just uh, do one step at a time. So let's get rid of the x squared plus one. So x squared plus one, divide both sides by x squared plus one, and then you'll get, you'll get cosine of y dy is equal to, let me write it this way. So negative x divided by x squared plus one multiplied by sine of y multiplied by dx. All right, so now we need to move the sine of y to the other side. So we, that means that we have to divide by sine of y on both sides. And it is true that sine of y is cotangent, but I'm going to leave it as it is. So we'll get the following. So we're going to get cosine of y divided by sine of y dy is equal to negative x divided by x squared plus one dx. All right, so that's the first step that I do, okay? So there are other people, they, they work with the differential equation in the beginning and then they just kind of group things together, which is the same thing. Uh, but I, I like to visually have the y's on one side of the equal sign and then the x's on the other side of the equal sign. All right, so well, what do we do from here? Okay, so we separated the variables. And so what we do is we're gonna slap some integral signs in there. And that means that we are going to integrate this guy, okay? So I have the, on the next step, on the next slide, I have the very bottom line and we're gonna work from there, okay? So first separate the variables and now we are at the point where we have to integrate. But now we have to realize that this is a, this is actually two little problems from calculus, well, depending on, depending on where you're taking calculus, calculus one or calculus two. So let's work with each integral one at a time. So on the left side, let's put the work on blue, in blue. So for this integral, we're gonna have to do a u substitution. So u is going to be equal to sine of y. And so the du becomes cosine of y dy. All right, so this is how I kind of visualize things. The red underlined stuff is going to be replaced by du. All right, so my blue integral becomes integral of one over u du. Okay, that's my blue integral. Now I can integrate this. And so this becomes, so let me put a little arrow. So this becomes ln of u. And so actually let me put an arrow here, arrow here, arrow here. And so this is going to be ln of sine of y. We're going to resubstitute. And, and yes, technically we have a plus c there, but remember we're dealing with an equal sign here. And so I try to put the plus C uh, only on the right side just to kind of simplify things. So, so far we have this uh, left side taken care of, but now we need to work with the right side. And notice that now we have to go and do another uh, calculus one problem or calculus two. And again, this is going to be a u substitution problem. So here we're going to make u equal to the denominator x squared plus one. And so the du becomes uh, 2x dx. And again, I'm going to highlight that Oh, actually, I need to do one extra step here. And so what I try to do is I try to match my integral. So this is, I divide by two on both sides. So I get one half du is equal to x dx. And if I want to go even one step further, I get one half du is equal to negative x dx. So this is just my preference on doing, um, working a u substitution problem. The red stuff is going to be literally replaced by negative one half du. All right, so now we are ready to integrate this purple integral. And so this is going to be the integral of the negative one half du becomes, oh, is going to substitute negative one half du is substituting the red underlying stuff. And then the other piece is 
uh, one half, uh, one over u. So negative one half du is substituting the red stuff. And then the, the denominator is being substituted by the u substitution that you chose. All right, so let me just uh, simplify this a little bit. So this is negative one half integral of one over u du. And so let me just write down the, let me put an arrow again. You'll see why I'm doing this. So this integral is negative one half ln of u plus the constant. Okay, but now we need to resubstitute with the u that we have, but we're working with the purple integral. And so the u that we have is x squared plus one. And so what we're saying is that this becomes negative one half ln of x squared plus one and then plus c. And the reason I put arrows everywhere was because I, I have an equal sign between the two parts. And so what I'm saying is that this blue answer that I got is equal to the purple answer that I have here on the bottom. All right, so we have integrated now. And technically we're done with the problem because we, we don't have any more derivatives in, in the original problem. The, the original problem is in the previous example, uh, previous slide. So now uh, we're done, but we want to see if we can simplify this a little bit. So let me start with the very bottom equation that we have. So I'm going to rewrite the bottom equation on the next line. So it's already typed here for us. So that's the bottom equation. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to move the one half to the other side. So that multiply by two. And so, so let me just say that again. So multiply by two on both sides. And then that means that this becomes two ln of sine of y is equal to negative ln of x squared plus one plus c. And you're probably wondering why do I have parentheses here? So if you think about it a little bit, the inside is already positive. X squared plus one is always positive. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move uh, move this guy to the other side because this is a negative sign. So I'm gonna move this to the other side. And not only that, I'm going to put the two inside, okay, inside the parentheses or the absolute value. But when you put it inside the ln, that becomes a square power. So this is going to be ln of sine square of y, and then it's going to be plus ln of x squared plus 1 is equal to the constant c. And now one of the properties of the ln, the reason I'm doing the squaring part is because the ln, if you have a plus sign in between, you can do a little bit of algebra and then this becomes the following. This becomes uh, ln of sine square of y, and then this technically is in parentheses, and then this is, oops, I put it too soon. This is uh, x squared plus one, and then close the big parentheses, this is equal to c. So let me separate the big parentheses here. So this is the parentheses for the ln. And so inside the ln, so you have the sine square y multiplied by x squared plus one. Now we are going to exponentiate both sides. Yeah, exponentiate both sides. So e raised to the entire thing, and then e raised to the c number. And on the left side, the E and the ln cancel out. And we just simply get sine square of y multiplied by x squared plus 1. And then on the right side, I'm going to just write down c. But you just have to realize that the e to the c number, e raised to the c number, this is a number that we don't know. So we just write down c. We don't just write down e to the c. We just write down another letter, which Technically, it's the same letter. All right, so this is a little bit more simplified than the answer that we got on the very top, okay? So I'm just saying that on the very top, in the very beginning, that, that was already the answer, the, the black typed. That was the already, that was good enough for us to say that we're finished with the problem. But sometimes we want to simplify as much as possible. And then so it's in the very bottom in gray, that's the simplified solution. All right, so that's all I have for today. Um, like I said, on a different video, we'll talk about the applications of the separable equations. That the applications actually are coming from the real life, and they're not like super advanced uh, technology applications. They're very simple, uh, but we'll talk we'll talk about that in a different video. All right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.